Welcome back folks, this is Steve and I am going to be building Sergei Kisilev's ISA 8-bit SVGA card. It's a Trident 9000 based card and if you've ever seen a Trident 9000 if you've, if you've ever seen a Trident 9000 based card um, this is an 8900, this is the one I showed you in the last video. See this chip here with all of those, I'm just trying to focus on my face, all of those pins on it? That's a lot of pins. That's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so to be honest, I'm a little intimidated by it, but we will figure out a way to make this happen and get this thing done and uh, stick around. Oh, and uh, be sure to do that whole like, comment, subscribe thing down below, and we'll uh, see you after the break. So every project starts with a big mess of parts, and this project was no exception. All this stuff was pretty easy to do except for this VGA chip here. There's a whole lot of pins. I'm going to put down some flux with my flux pen. I'm going to tack down one corner, make sure everything's good. Spend a lot of time at this stage to make sure that everything else is set up right. And then let's just start spreading the love. And the goal here is to get just enough solder on and I'm relying on surface tension and fluid dynamics and solder mask and chemistry and all kinds of stuff that's way above my knowledge level. But it's supposed to work, let's see what we can do with it. I'll do a little cleanup with the soldering iron itself and then we'll get out some 30 year old solder wick that does not work at all. And I've never used solder wick before this, so I didn't know that it didn't work, but I have since disposed of it and gotten a replacement. I tried using the desoldering iron here, and I think that might have been where I caused some problems with some bent pins. So I fiddle with this for way longer than I should, and eventually decide to be happy with it. No, fiddling some more, still not happy, trying to unbend some pins. And then we'll start putting the rest of the parts on. A couple of finishing touches here, some RAM and the flash ROM chip, and let's go test it out. Okay, this is the 9000, TBGA 9000 board that we just finished building. Uh, let's give it a try and see if we don't let any of the magic smoke out. I can't tell how much memory it has, and there's some artifacts all over the screen. But the RAM is counting up, and the machine is booting, and we are booted up. All right, let's get back to the bench and see what we can do to uh, make this picture look more like a picture. Okay, so I'm going to suspect, I'm going to go out on a limb and suspect that the issue is with those pins, because there's a whole lot of them there. So let's uh, see what we can do with that. I'm going to try and hit it with some solder wick and clean up some stray solder and see what we can do. So we'll zoom back out. Nope, that's zooming in. Too close. Back it off a bit. Now let's zoom back out. Soldering iron's warming up. Let's get out the solder wick. And let's get out, what else are we gonna get out? Let's get out some flux. And what I need is, I need to go borrow Becca's toothbrush. I'll be right back. Becca's toothbrush has been acquired. Let's get to work. Okay, we just tried a whole bunch of uh, mess with this card, and let's see if we can see some progress. Honestly, I'm not all that hopeful. Got, a, got no signal. 
Yep. It got worse. All right, we're back from the bench. I found one pin that wasn't connected. Not, I'm still not really happy with this, but uh, let's give it a shot. All right. We've got a signal. Oh! 512K of memory. That looks about right, because this has got half the memory of the other card. And we are booting. Oh my goodness. Let's run, check it, and do some video tests. Oh, that's so beautiful. Awesome. Benchmarks. Let's do video here and then we'll switch back to the other card. 1597 and 10,000. Okay, let's try saving it. And let's call this blue. A little faster, and a little faster. Let's compare it to the other card. Yeah, so direct video is the same speed, and BIOS video is a little faster with the 8900C versus the 9000. Excellent. Okay, so to be honest with you, building this card took longer than I thought it would. I actually started building this card before I started building the uh, floppy drive controller and the compact flash adapter, the IDE adapter, um, and it was a pain. And I will tell you what, I say very often, if it's ugly and it works and it ain't ugly, this ain't ugly. Because it works. Whew. Um, I plugged this thing in at first and saw that mess on the screen. I was not happy. Uh, I took a break for a while, I did some other things trying to regain some confidence and uh, made it work. Um, I am not going to touch this card anymore. This is how it is going to look for quite a while. Um, so on this side, on this side, and on this side there are some messed up pins. And that, there it is. That is uh, it's working. You saw all the diagnostics pass. I'm actually kind of afraid to clean it up anymore. Um, but we got it working and that's really all that matters and we can continue forward on our journey of building out a uh, XT compatible computer and keep right on moving. So I am, I'm kind of relieved more than I am happy at this point. Um, not gonna lie, this was pretty tough. This is, I, I probably will not do this again. Um, a, a surface mount tiny pin package is what I mean by this. I probably will not do a surface mount tiny pin package again because that was pretty difficult. But I appreciate you guys coming along for the ride and I know you were there in spirit cheering me along. So once again, thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one. Okay, so I'm just finishing up the final edits on the video. I'm pointing at the video workstation over there like you guys can see through the camera, through the backside of the... You're looking in the mirror behind me. That's what you're doing. I, I can tell what you're doing. Um, and I realized I didn't really tell you what I did to fix the card. Uh, what I had to do was resolder those pins that I pointed out on the three different sides. But in order to do that, you have to desolder them. In order to desolder them, you gotta use a soldering braid. And that was too detailed to get on camera. All you would have seen was the back of my head. And um, that's really not uh, good filmography, good cinematography. But uh, 
desoldered the pins, got in there with my uh, little X-Acto knife and straightened them out because they were bent. Um, soldered them back in place because they needed to be soldered back in place and got the job done. It was more challenging than it needed to be. The, the right way to do that is not with a uh, hand soldering iron. The right way to do that is with proper surface mount techniques. Obviously it can be done because I got it to work. Um, if you wanted to do something like that, you could obviously do it with a hand soldering iron, um, but I would recommend doing it the, uh, the right way with some soldering paste and a reflow oven or something like that. And by reflow oven, I mean like an old toaster because it doesn't, you don't have to spend a ton of money in this hobby to have fun in this hobby. But uh, I'm happy, it works. I'm playing with the machine. It's actually kind of on the bench over here doing something. Let me see if we can, oh, look at that. She's doing something. So lots of fun to be had in the future. We'll do some more videos with this machine and I still have uh, Sergey's sound card to build. So this is the, the last component in the batch and we will make this happen. This is a YM3812 sound card and I'm pretty sure it's Sound Blaster compatible, but we will uh, we'll figure that out, we'll get there. So stay tuned for that one. Oh, and I'm gonna say it again. Thanks for being awesome.